This video is part two in a two-part series on using Power BI's Outliers Detection Visual that was just released in the most current version of Power BI. The first part of this series, I went through how to use the Z-score and Tucky's method to identify outliers. This time I'm going to use the local outlier factor and Cook's distance. So those are the other two options that you have in the drop down for the detection method. So I've got some patient temperatures that I've uh, loaded in here, some sample data, and I just want to touch again on the z-score method and uh, just show you that for for this distribution of data and the way that temperatures are taken in a range of values, typically from 98 up to 105, the z-score method works really well. And when I look at it here, I can see that the, some of the outliers match pretty well with clinically what we would consider to be uh, a fever. Uh, it's a little bit higher than it should be, uh, at least in the United States, a, a temperature over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.7 degrees Celsius would be considered a fever. It's a little bit higher than uh, than we would consider, but it matches up okay. When we move away from this type of data and into data that is a little bit more clustered, in data that has points that are in different areas as we as we pull in different variables. Uh, the other methods work a little bit better and I'm gonna show you an example of, of how that works. The point is I don't wanna to get too much into the actual formulas and the statistics behind all this. I really wanna focus on how best you can use it inside Power BI. So I'm gonna go over to US crime data here and I have a, a scatter plot where I've pulled in the murder rate and the population in millions uh, as, a, as my two variables here. And I've changed the detection method to the uh, LOF, which is local outlier factor. And uh, I've, I've got the threshold set to the defaults, which is just a threshold of three. And uh, in, this, in this method, if you're familiar with the way that k-nearest neighbor works, then you'll understand pretty well how local outlier factor works. It considers the density of a point and the points around it, and the points that have low density compared to the points around it get flagged as outliers. So you can switch the threshold. You can also switch the neighbors. This is very similar to the, uh, the K and K nearest neighbors. And when I look at the plot that it gave me, this particular point here just visually makes a lot of sense to me. So I can tell high murder rate, low population. This point down here represents New Hampshire. And one of the great things about this visual is I can zoom in on a point and I can see see the points around it. And I know that just visually looking at it, there's three points here and there's a point over here and there were some that I didn't capture as part of the zoom. And then this this data point that's sitting out by itself. So that density factor here I can see that these points are somewhat dense. There's not a lot of points around there, but they're somewhat dense in comparison to this one that's out there by itself. So that gives you a good, a good sense of how the local outlier factor method works. Now I'm gonna switch it over to Cook's distance. Again, I'm just gonna leave the threshold at five. And Cook's distance uses the least squares regression method. So it's taking the residual from the estimated value and the observed value and uh, leaving that as, as the threshold. If it exceeds the threshold, then it's going to get flagged. This resulted in a little bit different data points here that got flagged as an outlier. Uh, still have Louisiana, but way out here we have California, which actually has a very low murder rate in comparison to states that are large in size or even smaller in size. In this case, a murder rate of five and a population of uh, 38 million as of 2012. So two different ways of looking at outliers resulted in some data points being flagged as outliers in both cases and in others they didn't get flagged that way. And, and that's just in comparison to the way that one does it by density and the other one does it by residuals using the least squared regression method. So if, if you want to look at these visuals a little bit differently, I did scatter plot in the last video I did box plot. I'll show you a density plot here, which I think is pretty helpful, especially when we're looking at uh, the local outliers factor, which uses uh, density as part of its as part of the algorithm. And here I can see these points that all all in blue that were not outliers, you know, huddled around 
points that uh, that are dense. If I go far out to the right here, I can see that California and Louisiana. This one's California and this one's Louisiana. I'm sorry, New Hampshire and Louisiana uh, don't have those dense, aren't part of that dense cluster or that dense set over there. So that's it on the on the charts and on the algorithm piece. What I wanted to do quickly is just talk about some hints and tips here. One of the things that you'll have to remember to do most of the time when you bring over a numeric field in Power BI, it's going to try and auto summarize it, count it, average it, whatever. You need to make sure you change this to do not summarize. Most of the time when I was dropping a value inside the visual, it said there weren't enough values because it was aggregating them all. Uh, sometimes there were so many data points that even aggregated and grouped, it gave enough data points to produce a chart and uh, and it just looked weird. So um, if you're running into anything that just seems odd or it's not displaying data, make sure to come in here and change this to do not summarize, especially if you're moving items in and out uh, quickly. The other thing that it's sensitive to is if you have a unique ID field in here, same rule applies, make sure it is it is truly unique and it's not summarizing it. The other thing it will do is it will, it will order the data points by that particular ID field. And if it is ordered, like it's, a, it's representative of a date, the, maybe the, the ID number really reflects the date in which certain things were entered, uh, it'll, it'll scale that data, or not scale, it'll line it up and order it. Uh, that way and it, it just looks odd when it comes in. So those are some some hints and tips around uh, things that I ran into as I was as I was demoing this and building it out. I'm going to leave it there. Again, any comments, uh, drop them in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback, anything else that you want me to cover. As always, subscribe so you're always up to date with new videos that come out and I'll be happy to hit you up with uh, the latest content. Thanks.